brothers and sisters in Islam. Jannah is just pure enjoyment. All the negativities that a person feels in this life, sickness, tiredness, boredom. My son always says, I'm bored. I'm bored. In Jannah, there is no boredom. Everlasting enjoyment means a boredom does not exist. It's impossible for boredom to exist. All of those negativities are given to the people of hellfire. وَالْعِيَاذُ billah. And everything that's left of positiveness and enjoyment is given for the people of paradise. How do I know? Allah has given us, this is what he says in the Quran, but Allah gives us an example of those feelings in our life here. You know when you live here, as we're living, we enjoy things and we have harm from things. The same things we enjoy, we get harm from. So if you like strawberry cake or chocolate cake, hands up if you do. You like strawberry, I only got one. Strawberry? Who's for strawberry? Who's for chocolate? And they get the kids putting their hands up. It's bad for your teeth, guys. In Jannah, nothing's bad for your teeth. You keep eating chocolate, you keep eating chocolate in Jannah, and you will never get enough of it, and you'll never get sick of it. Here in, in this world, you eat the most beautiful food you like, but then at the end, you get too full. Suddenly, you feel sick if you eat too much of it. And then after that, you might hate that food after it. Isn't that right? Well, in Jannah, this doesn't happen. You're thinking about the buffalo, the poor buffalo that was slaughtered. Well, in Jannah, there's no death. So what happens to the animals that you eat? Because you eat birds over there as well. You wish for a bird, and you eat it. But the bird comes back alive. But you actually enjoy its meat. You might not like birds, but in Jannah, it's not the same bird. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in Jannah, you are enjoying all of this, and enjoying your spouses, and enjoying your palaces, and all these people who are serving you, and the food, and the water, and the fruits, and all these beautiful blisses, wishing for whatever you want to wish for. Now it's taken your mind away. Someone calls out and says, there is a market here where you can buy things. Buy? You actually don't buy. You just go there, you wish, you look, you like, you take. There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that says in that market, a person will see a portrait. You grab a portrait and there's a nice painting on it. Someone's painted a nice painting of this gorgeous, beautiful, gorgeous, handsome man. The man looks at it and says, I wish I looked like that man. He goes home. His wife is waiting. By the way, wives can go shopping there. I know, oh my God, shopping is a big thing for women in this world. How could it not be in Jannah then? You can go shopping. However, you meet again at home. And suddenly she looks at you and says... Hey, you look more handsome than before. You look brighter. You look very handsome. And you say to her, and you look more beautiful than you were the first time I met you. What's happened? And he says, I, I just went shopping. She says, please go shopping again and again. <laughs> it's not like here, brothers. I know you get bored of shopping here when you go out with your wife. But over there you love to go shopping together, inshaAllah ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, when you go shopping there in those markets, you meet other people. You meet the Prophet you meet the, 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 the other prophets, and you meet all the, the angels, and you meet other people with higher place. There. You meet Abu Bakr, and Umar, and Uthman, and Ali, and all those other companions. You meet all these other people, and you shake hands, and you hug. What happens? Because their light is greater, and their fragrance is greater, naturally what happens in Jannah? You attract some of their beauty and their light and you attract some of their fragrance. And that's why when you come back, you look nicer and you smell nicer. And there's also a breeze that hits. Sometimes it comes through. And that breeze carries with it a beautiful musk or a beautiful fragrance. And it increases in your beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to have infinite, make you in beauty in, in, in infinite levels. Beauty upon beauty upon beauty. It never ends. You're enjoying all of this, brothers and sisters. And by the way, brothers, please don't disturb me, inshallah. If I enter Jannah, Ya Rabb, I'll have do not disturb for a thousand years. But if you want to meet, inshallah, I'll come to your palace, you can come to mine, inshallah ta'ala, and we can party there all night long. In Jannah, there is no night, however. So what are we going to do? You can wish for your own little night. Why not? You can wish for your own little sleep. I'll tell you what, one companion said, Ya Rasulullah, can a woman get pregnant in Jannah? I want children. He was a better one. That's how they used to ask their questions. The Rasul Sallallahu says, a woman gets pregnant in one hour and gives birth and returns back to the way she was as if she was untouched. And there is no agony or pain if you want children. <laughs> Amen.
May Allah help your wife. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you offspring a comfort to your eyes. How's that? I fixed it up before the brother follows me home tonight. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Islam. One Bedouin called down and he says, Ya Rasulullah. Oh, sorry, another man called down and says, Ya Rasulullah, what about plantation? Can I farm in Jannah? The guy wants to farm and plow and dig and plant. He said, Rasul smiled and he said, Allahu Akbar. In Jannah, you plant the seed and suddenly the beauty of your crops begins to race with your eyes. Sabaq al meaning your eyes and the beauty and the growth, it's in a race now. You can't catch up. And then a better one man said, Ya Rasulullah, wallahi, he must be some muhajir or an ansari because we better ones, we don't like farming, man. We can go up there and farm and plow. What's wrong with you people? Wallahi, I met once a Jehovah's Witness. Her name was Maria. And she opened up the Bible. She thought it was the Bible. And she showed me a beautiful picture, well, a painting of this white man and an African-looking woman. My, my son calls them brown. A brown woman with carrying apples on her head. And this white man, he was plowing. And they were looking at each other and they were smiling. And there was an, a lion that was playing with a butterfly. And sheep and children and snakes. No one's harming everyone. She said to me, isn't that beautiful? I said to her, I asked her, what is that? She said, that's Jannah. That's paradise. Can't you see there's no difference between whites and blacks? There is no difference between, there's no harm. The children are playing around the lion and the lion is playing with the butterfly. It's beautiful and peace. I said, I might as well stay dead forever. She asked me why. I said, all I see is a man plowing again and a woman carrying apples up the hill. You're going to have to go to work again? I said, paradise, there is no more work. There is no more worship. None of that ever again. 